Warning, the following message may be offensive to some audiences. These audiences may include, but are not limited to, professing Christians who never read their Bible, sissies, sodomites, men with man buns, those who approve of men with man buns, man bun enablers, white knights for men with man buns, homemakers who have finished Netflix but don't know how to meal plan, and people who refer to their pets as fur babies. Viewer discretion is advised. People are tired of hearing nothing but doom and despair on the radio. The message of Christianity is that salvation is found in Christ alone, and any who reject Christ therefore forfeit any hope of salvation, any hope of heaven. The issue is that humanity is in sin, and the wrath of Almighty God is hanging over our heads. They will hear his words, they will not act upon them, and when the floods of divine judgment, when the fires of wrath come, they will be consumed and they will perish. God wrapped himself in flesh, condescended, and became a man, died on the cross for sin, was resurrected on the third day, has ascended to the right hand of the Father, where he sits now to make intercession for us. Jesus is saying there is a group of people who will hear his words, they will act upon them, and when the floods of divine judgment come in that final day, their house will stand. Welcome to Bible Bash, where we aim to equip the saints for the works of ministry by answering the questions you're not allowed to ask. We're your hosts, Harrison Kerrig and Pastor Tim Mullet, and today we'll seek to answer the age-old question, should Christians show pronoun hospitality? Now, this is a topic that I think has been really, it's been talked about for a very long time. I remember, Tim, when I first started uh, at seminary, one of the one of the big talking points with my peers in class um, was this idea of, of should we should we use people's preferred pronouns even if we disagree uh, with with their understanding of sexuality um, and and you know gender and I, I it's funny because I I remember my professor was actually arguing that we should we should show pronoun hospitality. What, uh, what was he teaching? <laughs> Um, it was a man. What was it? It was my first. It was my first semester. I think it was some sort of family counseling class, maybe. At all. I, I don't remember the official name of it, but it, it was something. It was something like that, and it was actually a. Um, I don't know how old she was, but I think a, a younger woman who was teaching the class, probably, not, probably, maybe not even thirty yet. Um, I can't. I never asked her, but she she looked really young, um, and she was arguing that we should actually show pronoun hospitality. But then a lot of my um, fellow peers were saying, "No, no, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. If someone says, hey, 'Hey, I'm a duck,' I'm not gonna start calling him a duck." I, I remember that. I remember that line very clearly <laughs> um, uh, from those conversations. But um, one really interesting thing is uh, actually. Uh, J.D. Greer, of all people, has um, has weighed in again on this topic, right? And um, I, right. I guess I guess I I don't listen to. He has a podcast that I don't listen to. Um, For and, good reason, <laughs> right? And and I guess he had talked about this, and I guess, stirred up some controversy um, by at the very least implying that we should use people's preferred pronouns. Um, but to his credit, he came out with a second episode trying to clarify some points that he made in the first one. And, um, and we actually have this article that I, I just wanted to show a brief, um, snippet of, and this article is from Protestia, but right here there, you can, I guess we can, we can leave a link for this article in in the description on the, on the video on YouTube. Um, but uh, I thought this. I thought this paragraph was was pretty interesting, really, because uh, when I read when I read this right here, I want to clarify some things that I said. I was expecting Tim. I told you this already, but I was expecting like a non, you know, very vague non-answer. You know, something that doesn't really a- actually clearly define his stance on the issue, but would probably right. plea you know um you know it'd probably be enough for a lot of people uh, but 
to my surprise, I'll read this last paragraph, and, and it was at least pretty encouraging. It says, so you know, if somebody has transitioned, if Tommy, you know, now wants to go by Tara and wants to be called she, her, instead of he, him, should you consent to, to that and go along with it? Let me actually use a phrase I first heard when Andrew Walker, because I really liked, I really liked this framing. The answer to that question begins and ends with no. And the reason I say that is because I think as believers, we have to be crystal clear on the truth. So the answer begins and ends with no, that we should not use someone's preferred pronouns when we know that Tommy is a male, because that's how God created him. So when I read that, I was actually, I was pleasantly surprised because like I said, I was, I was expecting a non-answer from him in general. And, um, now, now there's some other things in this article that are a little are I think concerning still from him, but um, at least with that section, I was like, oh, okay, good. At least you, you know, well, at least you didn't give some kind of well, you know. Uh, I think and, it's still. I mean, I I hear what you're saying, but I think it's still <laughs> pretty Weasley. <laughs> like, you think it's still Weasley? Okay. No, I mean, I I. I'm glad that it, at the very least he's clear about um, the the answer begins and ends with no. I mean he's most he's mostly clear, but <laughs> I, I'm glad that yeah. it, at the very least you know the the obvious is being pointed pointed out that we shouldn't deny reality. But then you know as as is the case with uh, many of these guys when they um, make statements along these lines, they don't come across. Um, clear in terms of the nature of you know the error that's being made so you know he is an individual that is arguing for pronoun hospitality and now he's packaging the response as like a clarification on what he originally said which is then excused right so it's excused by the fact that well the cultural conversation has evolved and changed over time and clarified and it's like well no it hasn't changed at all (laughs) okay yeah the the same thing has happened since then so you know this is um typically when when um when when biblical counselors encourage people to you know ask forgiveness about things we typically encourage them to use the word you know i to say i've sinned you know please forgive me i was wrong you know and to be very specific about the nature of their sin to not excuse it with if ands buts or maybes to not try to you know explain their error away you know i sinned but then you know things have changed and well let me clarify you know what i've done and so i I think like the nature of the um yeah the nature of the clarification itself it it, like clarification isn't really a strong strong enough language to use in a situation like this you actively led people into error uh you encouraged them to sin and then not only that you were scandalized by the fact that people were rebuking you for it and you know those individuals who are rebuking you were the unloving ones the intolerant ones the the ones who are you know basically in your mind like what he did was throw them under the bus and then now you know now he's you know come come around to the good side and i'm glad that he's come around mostly to you know a positive position but let's not pretend like nothing wrong happened there and right that you're simply just clarifying your position you know for one no this isn't a clarification this is a total 180 different position that you're adopting now uh, so did he did he what my understanding because i don't i don't really keep up with him at all my understanding was that he put out um an episode before this that i guess in his mind wasn't clear but it sounds like you're saying no he was actively encouraging people to use pronouns oh what, yeah was he? he was, he was okay. definitely encouraging people to use pronoun hospitality and that's been something that's been going on for quite some time now and okay the, so like th- this isn't some kind of clarification that that this is just a change of this is a change of position here. <laughs> so, right. You know, and this isn't something that's you know crystallized in his mind. This is just you know, there's two options here. You either show pro- pro- hospitality or you don't. Okay. Yeah. You're encouraging people to show follow Preston Sprinkle's example of showing pro- hospitality, and now you're not. You know, now you're saying it's wrong, mostly wrong. So you know, I, I I'm glad that he now realizes it's mostly wrong, but you do have to deal with you know you have to deal with the different situation <laughs> right 
Yeah, yeah, and like I said, uh, I was trying, you know, I was trying to clarify. I do think there are still some concerning things. I mean, later you can go read the article later, but later on, he basically does say, you know, still, you know, call someone by their preferred pronouns in a hypothetical situation that he gives, and so he hasn't really fully committed to the position, but. Yeah, but, the, the situation he had in mind was, you know, if you're in counseling, if you're in some kind of counseling situation and I guess like, you know, the dad of someone is there and the dad is using the pronouns of, you know, his, um, you know, confu- gender confused person, right? If you want to put it that way. <laughs> and then in order to advance the conversation, you may use like those pronouns just to move the conversation along. But then, you know, what needs to come before or after that is uh, very clear. I don't believe that this these pronouns are actually uh, what you're saying they are. But let me use them for a minute just to move the conversation along. And I think, well, that's the whole point of pronoun hospitality in general. <laughs> mm-hmm. That you're arguing for is that somehow it's loving and gracious in certain situations to use the wrong pronouns in order to get you into a door to you know have a conversation to be loving you know but now he's just basically narrowed the acceptable range of doing that and then added a qualifier to say that it can only be a temporary strategy that needs to be followed up with a repudiation of it of some sort it's like well Mm -hmm. yeah it's let's just you know not use him at all (laughs) right yeah so so you know, when it comes to the question, should you show pronoun hospitality, your answer is no, right? Yeah, no, under any circumstance, no. Like, okay. uh, absolutely not, never. Uh, oh, you know, uh, uh, you'll have to kill me before I do that. No, <laughs> that's, the, that's the right answer. How are you going to uh, do it if you're dead? <laughs> yeah. Well, you'd have to, like, kill me and then, like, possess my corpse and make it, you know... <laughs> with the with the ai chip that can yeah yeah that's the only way that that's gonna happen yep (laughs) Yep. um okay okay so why not show pronoun hospitality because it's as as and what's his name andrew sprinkle right Uh, preston sprinkle preston Preston sprinkle preston sprinkle yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, who who is that by the way i don't know who that is he's just uh you know yeah, he's he's a guy. I think he used to, he graduated from Master's Seminary, but then he's basically just uh, become kind of a woke guy out there who is arguing for a lot of crazy stuff, particularly as it relates to you know um, sin of sodomy and things along those lines. So he's just an unreliable person that you. I mean, he, his name is Preston Sprinkle. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Just that tells you all you need to know, you know. <laughs> okay, a, a sound argument if I ever heard. Yeah, one. that's right. <laughs> um, okay, uh, uh, all, right. all right. So no, we shouldn't show pronoun hospitality. Uh, why? Yeah, why not? Why I not? mean, it's just it's a it's a dumb expression. I mean, if nothing else, it's just a dumb expression. I, just, I mean, it does feel cringy to say pronoun does, hospitality. It, it, <laughs> I mean, if you can't, if you don't cringe when you hear the expression, like you, you should, you know. So I mean, uh, but no, I mean, the, the yeah, issue- spell it out for those who who maybe aren't cringing, but think, okay, well, maybe I should be cringing, but I don't know why I'm not cringing. Well, I, I don't know how to explain that part, but I'll like if you don't know to be cringing, <laughs> and you're not cringing, and you don't understand why you should be, then I just I don't know what to say to you. Like as far as that goes, like you just something's messed up there, and you you, you should pray about that, but. Uh, um, but no, I mean, it, it really is about bearing false witness. It is about lying. It is about affirming something that isn't true. So this is a, a demand that's being uh, made. Uh, and, and this is just generally the left's tactic as it relates to, you know, a lot of these issues and a lot of these subjects. The, the left's, you know, basic stance is to try to uh, seize control over the dictionary and to compel speech in certain ways and to force uh, individuals essentially to deny reality in a wide variety of instances and this is just you know this is denying reality yeah and so, there and i mean even to the point of basically just hijacking biblical sayings right not right. that pronoun hospitality is a is a biblical idea but then like hospitality is a biblical idea and so they're hijacking it to mean something else it's the same as um you know like we did it we just recently did that episode on you know should you love your neighbor by eating bugs right, right. um like 
they're hijacking that those types of things um, and trying to make them mean what God never meant them to mean, right? Right. So you're trying to, you know, basically take a biblical idea of showing hospitality to someone and then you're, you know, perverting that idea and uh, co-opting that idea and putting it in service of an evil agenda. So, right. you know, we don't, in order to show hospitality to the individuals, you don't lie. <laughs> you yeah. never, you, you never have to sin in order in, in, in like that's like in order to show hospitality to someone that's like, we're just talking about a very different uh, concept here, you know? So um, basically but, what they're asking you to do is show hospitality to their sin. That's right. Yep. 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 So, um, which obviously like, Jesus never did. I mean, um, you know, you can go and read through the Gospels and see how he interacts with sinners. Now, he's, he's, you know, he's definitely spending his time with sinners. There's no arguing there. No one's pushing back on that idea. Well, but not then, the way people think, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not in like a, hey, we're all hey we're all buddy buddy kind of hey let's let's all get together and watch game of thrones together (laughs) you know for three years before i ever get to share in the gospel with you right because i want to be your you know because i Mm -hmm. yeah and you know let me go hang out with you uh, you know while you're engaging in prostitution you know and let me in a non-judgmental way i'll work up the courage to to share the gospel with you in six years and and then you'll still get mad at me anyways right and then i'll waste it all my time yeah no i mean certainly jesus was a friend of sinners but then what that that doesn't mean what people think it meant for one you know and then for two i mean he did he he certainly you know loved sinners but then jesus you know if you look at his evangelistic strategy it was pretty direct and it was pretty quick you know yeah so the woman um you know, you, you have the woman at the well, and you see his encounter with her, and I mean, immediately he brings up like the nature of her sin you, uh, that she's had seven husbands, and the one she's living with now isn't, right. you know, her husband. And so, like this, like his his strategy certainly isn't the one that uh, that most people think. Uh, I don't know if I've ever been that bold. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I still have a ways to go. <laughs> Yeah, I think, you know, in biblical counseling, you know, there's uh, opportunities at the very least to go there, you know, uh, fairly quickly. But, Mm -hmm. you know, I think um, most of the time Jesus goes there pretty quickly. Uh, So so is it okay? So so we shouldn't be showing pronoun hospitality. Is it a sin to use someone else's preferred pronouns? So not to have, you know, preferred pronouns for yourself to use someone else's pronouns. Yeah, I mean that would be the what the concept of showing pronoun hospitality is. is you're you're essentially using the pronouns that they prefer as a means of hospitality that's meant to say, hey, I love you, I care about you, I'm on your side and you know, I may disagree, but I'm gonna show you the respect to call you the you know, ident- the way you identify as far as that goes. And so no, I, I can't th- think of any conceivable situation where anyone should ever do that i mean that's just i mean that part of the problem is that we've done that at at every single level in our society we think in order to love people we have to essentially lie to them and that's what we do i mean that's what we were told to do with the covid stuff like we're told to lie to people in order to love them like lying to you means i need to put a you know cloth mask over my face face that i know doesn't work uh you know selectively as i walk into buildings you know stand certain arbitrary distances apart you know, like put like plastic barriers up between me that only go up to our face and there's a air hole underneath, you know, (laughs) or even air holes to the side, you know, like, and so like we, we, we're basically living in a society that demands that you lie to people, you know, um, in a fairly comprehensive way. I mean, we've been asked to lie to people in a very, fairly comprehensive way as it relates to the race discussion. Uh, so you have to deny everything that your eyes are seeing as it relates to the race discussion and basically just pretend as if like you're living in some, like, um, you know, uh, pervasively racist society and show special, um, you know, um, uh, privileges to members of certain skin colors who are engaging in destructive, uh, patterns and habits and and you have to pretend like all that is a result of something else other than their own personal choices you know we're, we're told uh, comprehensively the lie to women 
like as men, like you, you have to, like if you want to love your wife, you want to have a good relationship with her, you basically lie to her in a pretty systematic way and tell her the things that she wants to hear in order to make her feel better and not, you know, challenge her in any way with the reality. And so the same thing is true of this pronoun hospitality stuff. Like we, it's just a, you know, um, another example of, you know, a secular understanding that's better to lie to people because, you know, what it's about is it's about their feelings are, are um, king. You know, their feelings are sovereign. And yeah. whatever they feel, you have to validate that and you have to affirm that. And, you know, and, and, you, know I, I, you can read comments on the Internet that are basically saying, what does it cost you just to say someone's, you know, preferred pronouns as far as that goes? Well, it costs me my integrity, right? <laughs> It makes me a liar. Like Satan is yeah. the father of liars. Liars go to hell. You know, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You know, so yes, I, I we're we're to be individuals who love the truth, defend the truth, speak the truth. Uh, we're to put away all falsehood and speak the truth with our neighbor, as the Bible says. Uh, so, like, like what it means really to love someone is to speak the truth to them. And that doesn't mean you have to say everything that is true that you can think of in your mind. Mm-hmm. But it, but it certainly doesn't mean lying to individuals in order to make them feel good. And so, you know, as it relates to this kind of discussion, one of the worst things that we can possibly do is lie to these individuals and tell them, you know, call them by their preferred pronouns. They're engaging in a delusion. They're trying to deceive themselves. They think that if they just chop off all these parts and, you know, somehow they can be a member of the opposite gender. And I mean, it's just a, it's a destructive lie to them, right? I mean, it's just like you can just, like right now, you know, there's been a lot of these, um, you know, post transition, gender transition stories that are coming out that are being shared now that have been suppressed for so long. And I mean, it really is a horrendous thing that people are engaging in to basically castrate themselves or remove, like, you know, remove their, their, uh, healthy breast in order to pretend like they're a member of the opposite sex. And, yeah. and you know, the end result of that is that they, they, you have individuals who basically have scarred and mutilated themselves, destroyed any ability they have to have children. And, you know, like the worst thing you can do is just come along and just try to uh, enable them in this delusion. I mean, this is a, this is the kind of thing that they, you know, there's going to be a lot of suicides that come from that. It's not going kind to of come from, you know, people on our side who are mean. It's going to come because you know, that's the natural thing that a person, like, wants to get to do when they realize that they've totally destroyed like the image of God and you know, removed any chance they have of having a normal life uh, because they were, you know, engaged in some kind of uh, pervasive society wide delusion. So it's not loving to them to do it. And it's not loving to other people, you know, and that's part of the thing that you're not allowed to say, but I mean, it's not loving to, you know, those girls in the locker room who don't, who, who uh, don't want that guy who's pretending to be a girl in their locker room with them. Right. You know, so it's not loving to them. It's not loving to the all the female athletes out there in the world. It's not loving to, you know, to the children that these individuals are, you know, parading themselves around half naked and, you know, encouraging to put, you know, money in their underwear, you know. Like, it's not loving to anyone. And, and you know, and beyond that, what more importantly than all that, it doesn't honor the Lord, just a lot of people. Right. So the, and, the truth will set us free, man. You know, that, and, that Jesus, Jesus says you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. The lies are not going to set anyone free. And I mean, uh, for people listening, you know, you might be listening to Tim and thinking that some of those situations must be exaggerated that he described, like, um, especially like children being paraded around half naked, you know, like homosexuals and, and, um, you know, pe- men pretending to be women, women pretending to be men. Um, being forced to put money in their underwear. But those are, I mean, just go on Twitter. <laughs> just go on Twitter for like 30 seconds and you can find those videos. They're out there and they're, I mean, they're disgusting. Uh, yeah, it's it's interesting because I think right around Pride Month, everyone started sharing all those videos. And then, you know, you had a lot of people who were essentially saying, hey, you know, we don't want to see this kind of thing. And, you know, right. I, I didn't want to see my timeline, you know, um, you know, blowing up with, you know, all these individuals in state of undress. But then, you know, there is like, um, th- there is something about um, Christians that, that we do. Um, I, I don't think what we should, um, what I'm trying to say is I, I don't think we should 
we shouldn't be sharing those kind of things. But then there is a, the sense in which we're all, we are very sheltered from the realities of the kind of things that go on at, you know, gay pride parades and right. that are happening at these drag queen story hours. And, you know, like if you did actually see the kind of things that are actually going on, you, you, like, uh, you, you would ha- react in a more visceral way than what you are when you're sheltered from them. Yeah. Absolutely. Sort of take things more seriously. Probably. And the same thing with like, you know, these, all these pictures on Twitter of, you know, girls who essentially have scars, you know, right across their chest, you know, mm-hmm. the, the uh, pictures of the post, you know, top surgery kind of thing and all that. And it's just, it's the kind of thing that, you know, no one wants to see, but then it's, it's just, it's horrible, you know? And it's, yeah. Uh, and just listening to them tell their stories of you know sorrow that as a result when they finally wake up and realize what they've done like this is the worst thing we can possibly do right um but i mean you didn't have to know like you know maybe maybe some of those things are the kind of things that woke jd grew up a little bit to where he offered his non-retraction retraction (laughs) (laughs) which at least you know it seems like he's mostly on the right side now and i'm thankful for that but i mean I, i i don't um i you know if you're gonna if you're gonna have a retraction, I, I do think you should do it more like Rosaria Butterfield kind of retraction to say that, you know, the previous statement you made was one of the most you know stupid stupid things you've ever said. You know, as an adult right. Christian, that's better. You know, <laughs> that's better. You know, and you're I, owning I, it. You're owning it. Yeah. Yeah, to a much greater degree. So I respect that a lot more. But then I I'm glad he's on the right side. But it may be that he's seen you know a lot more now and 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 woken him up. Uh, up a little bit you know and part of it you know i i just i wonder um about his own you know moral judgment with some of these things it doesn't seem like it takes it's not all that complicated to like this isn't a complicated subject Mm -hmm. (laughs) and it doesn't like this isn't something that's like a deep mystery or something like that and i think what what the only reason why it's complicated for a person like him is because he is um there is a philosophy of ministry that kind of gets in the way that you know the philosophy of ministry is essentially to kind of cuddle unbelievers and mm-hmm. tell them what they want to hear period you know and so that just kind of goes along with it and it goes again that's his basic instinct is just to you know you you, you know you, you it's not a truth teller instinct it's a you know basically uh coddle unbeliever kind of instinct you know so right there's that um so is it the same situation if someone were to ask you your preferred pronouns? Like, like if you give, if you answer that question, are you legitimizing pron- pronoun usage at that point? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I wouldn't even answer that question. You know, I would just say that uh, th- there are, um, there's no such thing as preferred pronouns. There's only those pronouns that uh, correspond to biological realities, right? <laughs> so I don't get to pick my pronouns any more than you get to pick your pronouns. God's assigned my right. pronouns, you know. Um, essentially, you know, they're they're assigned um, by virtue of the language we speak, and, and which is corresponding <laughs> to created realities that are, you know, not up to my uh, personal whim here, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I prefer you use my, my only preference is you use my pronouns in English so I can understand you. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Oh, (laughs) okay. Well, I think, I think that's pretty clear. Um, so what if a person refuses? So like, okay, biblical counseling situation. That's what, that's what one of the issues that I had with what JD Greer said, he brought up a hypothetical situation that you mentioned where, you know, you have a, you have a, a parent and a child the child um is confused right on their gender they think they think they're a boy but they think they're a girl and they refuse to talk to you unless you use their preferred pronouns yeah. and that in that kind of situation do you use their preferred pronouns and in a and maybe like you know say hey i like you are not a girl but i will say she in order to share the gospel with you and tell you why this is sin. No. No. Okay. Why not? Same. De- so that's still lying. Yeah. Even if you say I do, like you are not a you are not a girl, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Makes my head hurt. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to, of moving parts here. <laughs> no, I mean, like that. I, I um, 
I understand that you're bringing that example up because that's the kind of example that people use, but that kind right. of example makes my head hurt, you know? Um, so, um, it's like, um, yeah, I mean, um, like I, I'm trying to give like a, a comparable situation that, that could bring some moral clarity to that kind of arrangement, um, uh, as far as that goes. But I mean, just, you know, just imagine that, uh, you're counseling a woman who like um, demands that you refer to her as your wife in order to like uh, as a precondition for counseling her or something like that. It's like, mm-hmm. well, you're, you're not, you know, it's right. like, yeah, well, it's <laughs> I'm married already. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just a matter of like, yeah, well, okay, well, I'll, I'll let me just like, if, if the only way you'll talk to me is that, that I have to do that, it's like, well, no, I like, that's uh we're not going to, Go that route. We're not going to go there. You know. Would you? Would you just like? Would you push it and say no? You're you're a guy, and then purposely, purposely, you know, say him or his. Yeah, part of, part of it. Or it, or just go to like the. I'm just going to use your name. Yeah, it has to be a, a specific kind of situation for that to happen, anyways, because like him and her are like third person. You know, right? Uh, singular pronouns there, and so you're not gonna naturally use that in a one-on-one conversation. You know, in right. general, yeah. Uh, so, like, it it would have to be kind of a situation like he brought up, where you know you have the father there, and then he's referring to the the son as a she. You know, and then demands that you go along, and when you refer to her in his presence, to call her a she. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so it'd have to be that kind of situation for it to make sense. But then, I mean, generally you don't appease Hitler, right? Mm-hmm. Like meaning, like, you, you know, you don't, um, it, uh, what, what I'm trying to say is like, you, do, like you can, you know, if, if the entirety of our counseling relationship, it, like it's dependent on some kind of lie or something like that in order for it to function, I'm just, you know, come to me when you're ready to have a real conversation, because all I'm going to say is I'm going to encourage you to turn from this sin. Yeah. Like I, you know, so I'm not going to pretend like you're a unicorn. I'm not going to pretend like you're a fairy. I'm not going to pretend like you're a dragon. I'm not going to, you know, I'm, I'm not going to do that, you know? Um, so, um, that could just maybe, a, a, you know, like just to help people understand, because like there's one area where you can't do this anymore. And that would be with like the racial discussion. Right. Mm-hmm. So like if you had a white person who was demanding, you call them an African American, right or something like that or a black person like everyone would know that no i'm not going to counsel you if you demand that i you know pretend like you you are a different ethnicity than what you actually are right so you just just imagine how that would go like that's like you're for some reason that's like worse than than the gender pronoun things in the minds of other people like it's cultural appropriation and all that you can't do that that's like a scandalous sin but no like that's not going to be like that's not the way that this is going to work and if you want help like you're not going to get help we're not going to have help on your terms right mm-hmm. and so like a pre- precondition of me helping you is not for me to inv- like validate your delusion to some degree like that's just not the way that it's going to work and i'm not going to go along with it and if you want help and this is something I tell people in counseling in general, like just in general, when I'm counseling them, it's like, Hey, you know, my, I have them sign a statement that basically says like the counselor is going to give you his interpretation of scripture. You know, that's what we're doing here. And so like what I tell people and over and over again is, is if you want counsel, I will give you counsel. You mm-hmm. may, you may or may not like it. Okay. <laughs> you may or may not like it, but I'm going to give, I'm going to give you what I believe the Bible, like biblical counsel here. And if you want it, it w- I, I believe it'll help you, you know, but if you don't want it, then it, I don't have any, I can't, I, I can't be of help, help to you as far as that goes. Right. right. So either you want it or you don't, you know, like, and, um, you know, there's, um, 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 you know, I used to watch Dr. Phil back in the day or whatever. <laughs> Uh-huh. But he had this, uh, you know, he had this uh, funny line that he he would say, um, like when uh, he was dealing with the stubborn and obstinate counselee or whatever. Uh, they basically arguing with him and disagreeing with him, and you just look at him and you basically say, "Well, how's that working out for you?" You know, it's not working out. <laughs> it's not working out for you very well. You know, but that's kind of the point. Like you, people come to counseling because they want help. They want help solving their problems. And if you want help, I'll give you help. But you're not going to put strings upon the kind of help I'm going to give you. Right. You either it, take it or you don't. You know, and yeah, so. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like we don't, we're not going to start out with like a hostage negotiation to where you're holding my head up, holding a gun to my head and basically demanding the kind of counsel you want. Like if that's what you're doing, you don't want me, you know, like, and I'm not going to be any good to you because I'm not going to play that game at all, you know? Mm-hmm. So like, that's just, we're, yeah. we're not, we're not going to go there with it. You know, it's, it's funny you bring that up because I remember there was a time um, I was meeting with someone and, and trying to share, I was sharing the gospel with them and, and we had met, you know, several times up to that point, and it was a college student, and and uh, they they told me that they had spent their entire weekend drinking alcohol, and I knew I knew why they why they were doing that. They were doing that to, you know, cover up with all of their emotional, you know, baggage that they didn't want to feel anything because I knew that they were really sad and 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 pretty weighed down by their sin. They knew what they were doing was wrong, and so. You know, I thought about, hey, do, all right, like it's it's really hard to get through to this person. Do I just tell them what they're doing is wrong? No, I, I maybe there's another way. And as I was listening to them, they told me like, hey, I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. And they're trying to get. A, I think at a certain point, I came to the realization they're trying to get a response out of me. And I and so I just asked them, okay, you know, like, all right, you drank all weekend to make yourself feel better. Did it work? Right. And, and and they kind of just stared at me for a second because they weren't expecting they weren't expecting that they're expecting me to say well you shouldn't do that right and and they just kind of stared at me and then and then they're like well no I guess it didn't <laughs> okay all right maybe we maybe there's a better way right and so it's funny it's fun. I didn't know Doctor Phil did that I didn't pick that <laughs> I didn't yeah. pick that well, I, I guess great just, minds think alike. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, he's crazy. In a, he's crazy in a lot of ways. I think it's yeah, a normal. Yeah. It, it's a normal kind of impulse. So when you're trying to help someone, like they're coming to you for help, it's a normal kind of impulse to where, like, I mean, there's a lot of people who say they want help, but they don't want help. Help. You know, they just want. They want. Most people they come to counseling, they want you to basically tell them that everything that they're thinking and everything that they're feeling and everything that they're doing is absolutely right. None of their problems are their fault. Every, everyone else is like to blame. Yeah. And what what they want then is you to basically just like validate and affirm everything about them, about their response, about how they're thinking about it and everything else. Uh, but then there's just this massive kind of problem that's uh, that's related to that kind of expectation. It's just the problem of, well, if everything that you're thinking and feeling and doing was right, why do you need help then, right? Right. And like, yeah. why do you need my help? Because it doesn't seem like whatever you're thinking and feeling and doing is working very well. So maybe you should revisit, you know, what you're thinking and feeling and doing. Now, I mean, that's not to say that, you know, if everyone, you know, behaves perfectly, that everything will go right for them. But I mean, like there is uh, meaning like in some prosperity sense, but there is like, if you're thinking about this correctly and you're feeling about it correctly and you're doing everything right, you should at the very least have some sort of peace and knowledge that God is got it in that he's in control and he's like you your actions are well pleasing in his sight you know so there should be at the very least that kind of thing but then when you're just totally destabilized and in everything else and it it is a sign that you might be handling things poorly at the right. very least in one way or another whether it's like you know things you're doing wrong or you're responding to things that are outside your control wrong like if you want help we can give you help but if you don't but you're going to have to listen to it you know and if you're trying to dictate the kind of help that you actually can receive then you know you might find that whatever help that this person is going to provide is not going to be what you think it is you know right it may not be as effective as what you think it is so if you if you if all you're looking for is just you know um someone to tell you that you're awesome and amazing and wonderful you know then just like get some kind of you know naive uh, gracious uh, girlfriend or something like that <laughs> it's just gonna be enc- <laughs> encouraging to you you know uh, kind of thing but if you want you know someone who's going to tell you the truth then then uh, then um, you might be you might have to be willing to hear it right yeah and, and that's why the bible says you know wounds from a friend can be trusted right, right because right. the the bible's assuming a friend is going to tell you the truth Right. Whether you want to hear it or not, even when it hurts. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's the funny thing about, you know, people in my life is that, you know, I because I don't lie to them in order to make them feel better. And because I don't I'm, I've developed some sort of reputation of basically telling them what I believe is true 
no matter how, like, you know, in any situation, when they come to me, ask me what I think, I develop a reputation that they're going to get what I think. And a lot of times they may not like it, you know, mm-hmm. but I at least have, like, I'll at least love them enough to get, uh, to tell them it. But what, one of the things that's really interesting about that, you know, looking at the people that, like in my life is that often, you know, they, people will respond pretty poorly to that, you know, at first, but then when their life is a mess and when things are going wrong and they have all these people around them who are telling them lies and they know their lies, right? Mm -hmm. They know their lies because they're not working. Right. And so, you know, you imagine like the single person who no one wants to marry and, you know, everyone around them is just telling them that they're awesome and that they're amazing and just wait, their Prince Charming is going to come one day and all that kind of stuff, right? You know, like everyone around them is telling them those kind of things and they know their lies. Like they know that there's no promise, you know, but then they'll come to me, you know, like when, 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 when they have no one left to go to, right? They'll come yeah. to me because everyone else is lying to them. They'll, they'll actually seek me out and come to me because they know I'll be honest with them, you know, and I'll tell them the truth, you know, as far as that goes. And when, when like their problems have gotten to the point where they can't stand them anymore, they'll come to me, you know, and I'll be the person they come to. They won't come to any of the other friends, you know, you know, friends they have who are going to lie to them. They'll come to me and they'll know that they'll actually get an answer and they know that they're probably not going to like it, you know, but then they, <laughs> mm-hmm. at least they know that like that, uh, they can trust me because I'm not going to lie to their face about it. Right. And that's I've why been that per- I've been that person before. With right. You. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's like you, you and, and you, you probably know what's going to, what I'm going to say before I say it, because it's going to be the one thing you don't want to hear. Right. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. There's going to be that one thing you want to hear, but there's one thing you know is right, you know, and, but then that does give you, you know, stability. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it does give a person right. stability just to say, okay, like let's, I can't deny the obvious, you know, here, here, here's what it is. And, you know, I've often had people come to me like that and they can tell me my position before I even say it, because it's one, it's the biblical position that they're trying to fight. Right. Mm-hmm. And two, it's like, they know, they, they, uh, they know I'm the only one who's going to, going to shoot straight with them. You know, as far as that goes, but that's why it's so important not to lie to people from the start, though. Like if you have some kind of counseling situation that is, you know, basically starting with a gun to your head, you you play by my rules or else you don't have access to me. It's like, well, whenever you're ready, you come right mm-hmm. when you're ready to have a real conversation. You come talk to me. But until you're ready, I can't help you at all. And that's what people need to say. Like, that's what you need to say in those kind of situations. I'm not going to be of any help to you until you come to the end of your road and realize that you have nowhere else to go to. Right. Right. And then I'll give you what's right, but I'm not going to start this off like you know, um, um, basically um, shooting myself in the foot, you know, with any kind of integrity that I have by basically playing by the rules that you want me to play by. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, last question, and this is one that I know I've seen even from people who are in in every other area. I would consider totally fake, you know, well, I mean, as far as, you know, as far as like, mostly you can tell from the public eye, you know, faithful, right. Um, Maybe totally faithful is not the, the fairest thing to say, you know, since we're all sinful, but um, solid, they're 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 solid, solid, they're solid guys. Right. Yep. Um, I have seen even solid guys that I listen to some of them um, who refer to transgenderism as a mental disorder right so so we mentioned talking you know you see the pic you see the pictures of people who they got top surgery right they they removed their breasts or um you know in some cases they're removing their genitals right they're they're mutilating themselves thankfully often. no one's sharing those photos yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> i don't want to see it i don't know that we need to start sharing those ones i'll i'll yeah me personally i'll just you know i'm gonna take your word for it <laughs> right. right um but you you see these uh you see how terrible these things are and and now you even have videos coming out of of people who have they they're they're a year or several years down the road from getting this sort of i mean life altering uh types of surgery and medications that you're taking to um you know well the uh, numbers they, have the numbers have spiked you know and so now i think you have enough time that's gone by to now see the you know wreckage at the end of it right yeah. right and so so people so that's really making its way onto social media right now you can't deny it that it's happening 
Um, and so in response, um, a lot of people have been saying, Hey, you know, like transgenderism is just straight up a mental disorder. Like that's how bad this is. Um, so, and we shouldn't should, be like encouraging them and their mental disorder kind of thing. Right, right. Right. Yeah. So, so they're not like, they're not saying it's a mental disorder as like a cop out. They're saying it as like a, this is a serious thing. This is something very serious that we're not taking seriously enough. Uh, and, and it's so serious that it's a mental disorder. It's just gotta be right. And so, right. so what, so how do you view that? I mean, is, is it a mental disorder? Um, or, you know, like, well, I, is it a mental disorder? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think that was this, you know, the, the same kind of thing happened with um, sodomy as far as that goes. And so it used to be viewed as a mental disorder. And then, and then, you know, after, you know, you have lobbying with the American Psychiatric Association and all that, like it, it got removed out of the DSM from like a mental disorder until now it's like, it's not considered a mental disorder anymore due to pressure as far as that is concerned. So step one was to label it as a mental disorder. And then step two is to remove it from that. And now like often when people are talking about transgenderism, you'll hear the language, like the therapeutic kind of language they're suffering from gender dysphoria or whatever else. Right. Right. And so like, like these are people like, and you'll hear like conservative voices, like individuals like Matt Walsh or whatever say, these people are suffering from mental disorder. This is gender dysphoria. They're suffering from mental disorder. They don't need to, you know, have, uh, you know, these predatory doctors preying upon them and, you know, essentially encouraging them to make irreversible choices. They're, they're suffering from a mental disorder. And so there's a kind of sympathy that's uh, given to them as far as that, that's concerned. And, you know, that's the part of the problem is with the mental disorder language. And we've talked about this in different kinds of episodes is that when people hear that, they hear that this is like a brain problem, essentially. Like this is like, a, like, and not just it's a brain problem. Like, it, 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 like what they don't hear is this, this is a problem of thought and behavior that a person is in charge of. Does that make sense? Mm hmm. They're not hearing like this is a problem of thinking and a problem of behavior and we are responsible moral agents before God, and we're responsible for how we think and how we act. Like what they're based in, in even you know how we feel. Like this is what 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 they're saying is that this is a mental problem, mental disorder. Meaning, like somehow, like all you know, moral agency is being removed from these individuals, and they're just suffering from some sort of glitch in the programming. Right, and that's yeah. what people hear when they hear mental disorder. It's like a glitch in the programming. Right, so. Like this, this uh, the brain in some sense is structurally flawed in some way that's producing this these feelings or sensation that an individual, you know, like they they were born a man and then they somehow believe that like their their own personal identity is not matching up with that and it's somehow a brain problem, it's somehow a biological problem, uh, you know, and that it couldn't be further from the truth. This is not a brain. This is not a biological problem. This is not a brain problem. This is like you're talking about the origin of this problem. This is not like. This is not um, mental illness in that way. It is a problem of thought and behavior, like in the sense it's like a, like it's a, like it is mental illness in that sense. It's a thought, you know, problem of thought and behavior, but this is a culpable, you know, th these are culpable issues as far as that goes. And so we, we would do better to not use the language of mental disorder as it relates to these, this kind of subject. And, um, and take away all moral responsibility that's happening here. You know, you have a, you have an epidemic of, you know, young girls in particular who are embracing this transgender uh, kind of delusion. Uh, but that it's, it, you know, this is mostly responding to peer pressure. It's mostly responding to body image kind of issues. It's mostly responding to, you know, um, uh, it's a rejection of their assigned gender. It's related to their, you know, their um, relationship with men in general. Like these, these are, these, these, these are moral problems that we're talking about. This is not just um this is not some kind of, like you can't cop out and just act like it, as if it's some kind of biological problem that's happening. Right. It's a sin issue. It's a it's sin, a sin issue. issue. Yeah. Yeah. This um, is a sin issue. This is not some kind of quasi medical illness that people are unresponsible for that they need help. No, like these are sinners that like are rejecting the image of God in themselves. Uh, this is a sin issue. This is a moral issue. And we should talk about it in moral terms in that way. Yeah, but there's great, like the problem is like that may feel mean to some people, but like there's great hope in treating it as a moral issue because if it's a moral issue, it can be repented of. 
Right. You know I mean? yeah. So God's given people over to a debased mind, a mind that's no longer a mind, like a mind that's not functioning as it should. Uh, this is a high-handed rejection of the image of God in them, you know, but it's something that can be repented of. Um, but I mean, you know, if you, if you go down the surgery route, you know, there are long-term entailments to that or the hormone treatment. There's long-term entailments of that that you may never be delivered from. And that's why mm-hmm. we need to warn people, but this isn't some kind of, you know, problem that's beyond their, like that th- they're not morally responsible for. Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to ask you, you know, so for the, for those people who they, okay. So I saw a video, um, this last week of, uh, I, I don't even know, honestly, what gender the, this person actually was. It was so hard. It was just hard to tell. Um, uh-huh. and, and, but they, re- I, they regretted, going through all of the things that they did right. to try and, you know, change their gender as if you could. Um, and so for that person, so I, based on what you're saying, we should number one, still that still view that person, even though what you're seeing, the regret you're seeing is, I mean, is just like heart wrenching. I mean, it's, it's awful to see someone have to go through that. You still have to recognize like, Hey, this person is sinful and the reason they're going through this is because of uh i mean certainly deception you know on a lot of people's parts probably uh pressure from you know certain people in that person's life or at least from society in general um but it could be res- poor responses to you know real legitimate you know sins of others against them too right uh, but so, so the, like if you're a girl who is like raped or something like that, and then you don't, you know, or a girl that's not, you know, desirable to most men or something along those lines, and you want to quit feeling undesirable, you can, you know, turn to transgenderism as some kind of all purpose, like uh, rejection of your femininity to not have mm-hmm. to, to try to drown out like the feelings of, un, you know, being undesirable or to make yourself totally undesirable to men, you know, in a certain sense too, but keep on going. Yeah. So we still need to view those people as sinful, right? They're, yeah. Mean, and the regret and the remorse that they're happening, that like, that isn't a sign of repentance at all. Right. So I right. mean, that, at the, you know, that may just be worldly sorrow, right? So there's godly mm-hmm. sorrow and there's worldly sorrow and, you know, the sorrow of the world leads to death, which is why a lot of transgender, you know, you know, people who, pretend as if they're a different gender for a period of time and try to, you know, surgically and chemically change their gender, like, which is impossible to do. They end up killing themselves because they're, what, what's actually happening is that like the kind of sorrow they have is worldly sorrow, lead, which leads to death. It's not godly sorrow. They don't see themselves as, you know, sinful objects of God's wrath, right? Right. Like who have rejected the image of God in them and who are in need of repentance and forgiveness from their maker. That's the problem is that they don't have any solution to this. And the more that you, you describe it as a, they were suffering from some sort of mental disorder, right? Well, if they were suffering one, if they were suffering from some kind of mental disorder, why did they change their mind? Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, if it's just like, you know, like, like if it was like a legental, uh, like a legitimate, Mental disorder, like, um, you know, mental retardation or something like that. I know you're not allowed to use that expression, but I could care less. Like, if they were mentally retarded, right? Like, mm-hmm. that's not something you can grow out of. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Because right. it's a, like, you know, or if, like, it's, if it's a legitimate brain problem, it's not something you can just change re- overnight, right? And so the fact that, like, they experience buyer's remorse at the end shows that this is a moral decision they made that they were capable of getting to the other side of does that make sense yeah yeah Yeah. so i mean that that doesn't mean that anyone who's not capable of shutting off the unpleasant feelings it then is in the category of mental disorder i'm just trying to say that obviously you know all the people who are experiencing virus remorse they didn't have a mental problem right now and, and if you call them if you say that this is a mental disorder you know then you're cutting them off from like the solutions that you're going to find in the gospel too. Yeah. Right? That the thing that's actually going to help. The thing that's going to help is for them to take responsibility for what they did mm-hmm. and to, to, to repent of it and to c- consider it a sin against God 
and if they could if they could see it like in God in a God centered way that this is sin against my a high handed rebellion against my maker then the issue is they could become forgiven. And they may be like, you know, one of those individuals who've made themselves eunuchs, right? Or were made mm-hmm. eunuchs by men. But then they could still be a faithful eunuch, you know, uh, to God at that point going forward. God can give them a righteousness, like an alien righteousness, his own righteousness as a free gift and can fundamentally change the situation they find themselves in. I mean, not like, uh, I mean, he, he could, you know, fix all the the results of it if he wanted to. His hand is not limited, but he generally doesn't choose to do that. There are consequences to this, but they can have his pleasure going forward, and they can be a faithful Christian going forward, and they can inherit eternal life going forward, and they can look forward to the day when everything will be made right. Right. Uh, But that's not going to happen if you're just basically treating them as if they're non-morally accountable agents before God. Yeah, if you're you're not treating it like what it is sin or if you're you know lying to someone right. just just in the name of trying to gain an audience with even even just to gain an audience with them i right. mean you're you're actively preventing them um from from the uh, from getting to the solution that right. god provides and that's the whole point that's that's why this is such a big deal that's why we can't you know, show quote unquote <laughs> pronoun hospitality is such a such a goofy phrase to even say. Yeah. Um, but we can't because ultimately it's pre- it's preventing people from repenting of legitimate sin in their life, right? right? And and if we don't repent, then then God's clear what ha- what happens to us, right? We right. And we have to face condemnation for our sin and spend eternity in hell experiencing God's wrath. Um, so, and the only thing, I mean, the only hope they have, I mean, the only hope that a person like that who has basically destroyed their chance of ever, you know, having intimacy with like physical intimacy with another human being for the rest of their life, producing children with, you know, for the rest of their life, the only hope that person has is to live to a, like, a higher transcendent purpose, right? To, to, to live to the glory of God. That's the only hope they have because they've rejected, you know, a, some of the most, you know, significant and essential things that make them human beings, right? Right, right. And so, like, the only hope they have is to learn to live to God and learn to live to His pleasure. And apart from that, I mean, like, that's like we're we're gonna see a wave of suicides. Yeah, and and you know as a final sort of like, Hey, there is still hope even for that person who has mutilated their body beyond repair. Um, but you know, they repented, right. And, right. and now they're trying to, um, pursue obedience to God as best they can in light of the fact that they're still fa- They're still going to have to face consequences for their sinful actions. The, one of the great hopes I think is that, you know, one day, we will spend eternity with God and you know, the Bible says that we'll be glorified, that the father will glorify us, uh, meaning that meaning we'll be made perfect. Right. 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 Um, and so our, not only is our sin nature removed of from us, but we're given perfect bodies as well. All the the consequences will be removed. Yeah. Yeah. all, All the, all the consequences will be removed. And so, so I think there is still a hope for that person, not necessarily, you know, in terms of their physical body, not necessarily in this life, but then in the life to come, the God can still, God will fix those things. Sure. Um, and so, so I think that's a good um, hope for us. But I think I think that's everything I've got for you, Tim. Um, so and I think that's a I think that's a good place to sort of wrap things up and and just sort of end on like on a note of hope for that person. So hopefully this has been a, um, encouraging episode for you guys. I think there's a lot to be taken away. If you're the, you know, if you're the person, uh, who's a Christian who is, who is already against these ideas, you know, I think there's a lot to be taken from this in the sense of like, no, don't use pronouns. Number one, don't use pronouns. But then number two, be bold and sharing and sharing the gospel be bold and and calling sin sin because if you don't then you're you're not you're not helping anyone right you're not actively participating in the ministry of reconciliation 
um, because you're not trying to get anyone to realize that they need to be reconciled with God. Um, and so, and for the people listening who, you know, who are, are tempted to reject God's design for them and, and their physical bodies, we would just encourage you, um, you know, accept the way that God has made you because it is the only way God has made you. And there is no other alternative. He assigned your gender at birth and you cannot change it no matter how much the society tells you you can. And if you try to change it, you are actively rejecting his creation and you are rejecting him. So repent of those sins, fight against those sins, find a local church who will hold you accountable and who will encourage you um, and and show you know true love towards you, not, not the kind of love that people who are pushing pronoun hospitality would say is love. Find people who are who will actually love you and tell you the truth, even when it hurts. Um, so we, we, we thank you guys for listening and supporting to uh, uh, supporting us week in and week out. And we look forward to having you guys on the next one. This has been another episode of Bible Bashed. We hope you have been encouraged and blessed through our discussion. We thank you for all your support and ask you to continue to like and subscribe to Bible Bashed and share our podcast with your friends and on social media. Please reach out to us with your questions, pushback, and potential topics for us to discuss in future episodes at BibleBashedPodcast at gmail.com and consider supporting us through Patreon. If you would like to be Bible Bashed personally, then please know that we also offer free biblical counseling, which you can take advantage of by emailing us. Now, go boldly and obey the truth in the midst of a biblically illiterate world who will be perpetually offended by your every move.